Chegou a melhor parte do podcast. É hora de provar a melhor Coca-Cola. A Coca-Cola sem açúcar. O sabor irresistível da Coca-Cola. Sem açúcar e igualmente refrescante. Coca-Cola sem açúcar. A melhor escolha. What is Café Mocha? Café Mocha is experts, celebrities. What's up? This is Belle Bib DeVoe. Yours truly is This is Fantasia. This, This is Invo. This is India Ari. Oh, so much more. All from a woman's perspective. What flavor are you, baby? This is Café Mocha. Are you ready for Black Love? Owns dating series Ready to Love is back for season five. They're in D.C. The host, Tommy Miles, takes us behind the scenes. Like, how do you get on the show? What about the unexpected love connections? What's the craziest moments? Cafe Mocha begins now. Bored with Netflix yet? Lonnie's got her list of books that she's interested in. Well, right. You know, I mean, I really believe in uh, supporting authors. And when I say books, it, I love a good old book. And the summertime is coming. Um, I think that we should increase our reading. And so I have a variety, a few books by Black female authors that I think are really interesting. One um, is my co-host, Garcelle Beauvais. Her new book is called Love Me As I Am. And this is a memoir. And in it, she is going to be giving juicy details because you got to remember, she's had a long career. She Oh, yeah. Be- Over 30 years, the Jamie Foxx show, she did, uh, you know, Coming to America, the original one. So mm-hmm. she's, and she does not hold back in her book. So uh, Garcelle's book, again, Love Me As I Am, it's out for pre-order. There's also an interesting book by um, an author, an executive. Her name is Michelle D. Horde. And unfortunately, it's a sad story. She was married, got a divorce. And her husband um, was a strange husband, killed her seven-year-old daughter. Hmm. And so in this book, she details how she survived that. Um, Her name is Michelle Horde, and the title of her book is called The Other Side of Yet, Finding Light in the Mist of Darkness. And we'll probably have her on too, but I mean, when I say resilient, Hmm. Um, and the ex-husband is now in, in jail, but this is a, a very interesting book about survival and how, you know, she had to deal with this and still dealing, um, with this. So that's called the other side of yet. There is another author. Her name is Candace Marie Benbo and Her book is called Red Lip Theology, and it's for church girls who've considered tithing to the beauty supply store when Sunday morning isn't enough. So a little parody. Yeah. The thing about Candace is that she's big on describing her religious upbringing and her criticisms of what the church is about. So it's a very interesting book, but it's called Red Lip Theology. So that's something that's also, I think that's something worth looking at. Another uh, person who's uh, our family, uh, Tiffany the Bajanisha Alish J. She has her book, Get Good With Money. And this is for finances. Mm. And I think that is a, a really good book. As you know, Tiffany worked her way up. She has become one of the leading financial advisors of our time. So this is her first book. It's um, a New York Times bestseller and it's called Get Good With Money. We also want to send our condolences because Tiffany's husband passed recently. And so um, that's why it's been hard to get in contact with her. But she still, you know, we still want to lift her up in prayer. But we also want to support her by buying her book, Get Good With Money. Another book that um, from a author that we love, she's usually on CNN, Laura Coates. Laura Coates has a new book out called Just Pursuit, A Black Prosecutor's Fight for Fairness. And as you know, she's a former federal prosecutor. And this is her book. Yes. And this is her book, um, Just Pursuit. 
And I think this is something that's very interesting that talks about, you know, what black prosecutors go through when mm. you're trying to fight for fairness and for uh, for justice, you know. And, it, you know, it's crazy. You know, anytime I I shouldn't say anytime I talk to a black man, but a lot of black men are really hard on uh <laughs> VP Harris, because, you know, she was a prosecutor. She was, you know, and they look at her as someone that threw a lot of black men in jail, not really understanding that that's the prosecutor's job. You know what I'm saying? There are rules, there are laws. Anyway, I want to throw a book in. I want to just interrupt right here and then you can jump back to your book Uh because it's related to this. It's not, unfortunately, it's not a um, black woman. It is a white male. Uh, You guys are familiar with the Innocence Project. Yes. Legal firm that gets innocent people out of prison. Uh, One of the guys over there, Chris Fabricant, has a book out called Junk Science and the American Criminal Justice System. If you have anybody that you know Mm. who's in prison right now over bite marks, uh, that uh, uh, an expert coming in saying, oh, it was bite marks or, oh, uh, tire tracks. We followed the tire tracks or the Nike prints to this person. All that science that we see on CSI, all that science we see on forensic file or the last 48 hours, according to his book, most of it is junk. Most of it is garbage. And you flip through and I'm a forensic file junkie. And so I've seen all this stuff, blood spatter, that stuff, blood right. spatter, where they figure out what the trajectory is. Right. All of it is garbage. You will find this book fascinating, especially if you have somebody in your family who's in jail for um, something that they didn't do, sure. but the expert said they right. did. Uh, anyway, it's called Junk Science in the American Criminal Justice System. Uh, Lonnie, just go back. And to the you. last book I think is something for us. If you need to laugh, is my book. I tried to change so you don't have to. It's always out there, so you can pick that up. But yes, this should be the summer of reading. Uh, reading is very important, and please mm-hmm. support Black authors. The, you know, the, these publishers. These are all published books. These publishers, you know, they look at us and they feel like, you know, it's hard for Black authors to sell books. So that's why even if you want to just buy it on Audible and listen Mm -hmm. to it, do Mm -hmm. it that way then. But at least support Black authors. So they think we don't read. They think we don't read. That's the that's the Cafe Mocha Book Club for this month. Check me out next month. (laughs) <laughs> and, I, and I love it and because I'm an auto reader, a listener. So I love it. And I, I'm definitely going to look for some of those books because they, those when you listen to them, it goes so quick. Yes, definitely. You need, you need another one. But yeah, I can't wait to check out um, the one about the daughter. Ugh. Yeah, it's really sad. It's Cafe Mocha. It's Cafe Mocha, Angelique, Lonnie Love, and Yo-Yo on the line. You know him from Ready to Love. We've got (laughs) comedian Tommy Miles and, like I said, the fearless host of Ready to Love, season five. Tommy, welcome to Cafe Mocha. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. How y'all doing? We're doing good. Now, you know, you, you follow, like, Ready to Love. For people that haven't seen it, explain to people, because I love the show and I love you on it, but <laughs> for people that haven't seen it, explain what it's about. Ready to Love is a is a dating show, but it's you know, it's not your it's not your typical dating show. We're not talking about people in their twenties. We talking about people in their third late thirties, forties, some in their fifties. These are people that have you know, these are people that are divorced, these are people that have been married to their to their occupation, to their careers, and now they have decided that they want to find love. So we start off with ten men, ten women. It's a process of elimination. By the time we get to the end of the journey, we are down to six people, three couples, hopefully uh, three couples who have found love. But women eliminate men, men eliminate women, and it just keeps going back and forth. And you you, you rooting from your from your couch at your house because you got a certain group, you, certain couple you want to get together. You got some people you want to be that have sent home. You just, and you in it. And, and it's a roller coaster ride. And 
nephew, nephew Tommy, I have to object to hear you say they're not young. They in their thirties. What about the the forties, the fifties? You got any of them? <laughs> no, they, that, that's what I'm saying. They're in their thirties, forties, and some are and, in their fifties. Okay. We don't have, we don't really, we don't really have any in their twenties. You know, most dating shows, they twenties, they, you know, they they hawks, they, you know, this is people that have <laughs> lived already. And hey, this is this is that grown and sexy black love right here. Yeah, are you accepting people like Angelique? Because I'm tired of her being single. <laughs> and put her on the show, please. She needs well, come some. on, Angelique. She needs next, next, next season is Miami, so come come with me. Oh, wow. That it's sounds so- like it'll require a bathing suit. Um, <laughs> but, but seriously, like... I know a lot of people watch the show and want to know, how do I get on that? So how do you get on the show? You know, it actually has to be in your city. Like when, this, when you know, we started off in Atlanta. So everyone on the show are, you know, people that live in Atlanta. We did two seasons there. We did two seasons in Houston. And uh, and now we're finishing up our second one that we did in D.C. And the next, you know, the next stop is, is, uh, is Miami and we'll be there for two seasons. So it's moving around. So you never know. When it comes to your city, you just got to be ready and be single. That's the most important thing. We didn't have people pull up, get out, come in, get interviewed. Yeah, you're going to be good for the show. And then, well, I got to hurry up and get back to my wife. She waiting on me. What? What you talking about? You married? Come on, dog. Really? You married? You came in here and went through this whole interview. You, you, we can, we going to put you on the show and your ass is married? Are you serious? Oh, my God. That is hilarious. Have you had any great couples link up any professional couples or any great stories of of those who have come on the show you know we, we we've had some great stories we've got some people that you you've seen them on the show and they didn't they didn't connect with each other and then we find out later oh my god they're dating they're they tell about getting married so it, it it happens and you are here's one we've had people in uh in Houston, because we had two seasons in Houston, we've had people that were not on the same season, mm. but wind up linking up. So wow. it just, it just, it just happens. It's Cafe Mocha. We're talking to nephew <laughs> Tommy Miles about uh, Ready to Love season five in D.C., the yep. DMV area. You know, Tommy, I want to ask you for people who live and have lived in different cities. I mean, you used to live in LA, then you right. in Atlanta. You know, do mm-hmm. different cities have different dating personalities and profiles and ways they move about? I think so. I think I think there's different vibes. Uh Atlanta is in a in a class all by itself. Um <laughs> You know, you know, it's a lot of single people in Atlanta and, and, and that just, that throws me, but you know, it's, it's a, it's a crazy ratio, uh, ratio in Atlanta. I mean, it's 20, 20 ladies to one man. If you did the ratio in Atlanta, so, you know, every man has, has his pick at what he wants. And it's, that's kind of, that's gotta be a little lopsided for, for the ladies because you know, their, their pickings are, are a little lesser than, uh, than, the, than what the men have. And then Houston's kind of pretty much 50, 50, but the vibes are different. The, the, um, the nightlife is different in Houston. Uh, Lonnie, you can contest to that. You, you, you Houston back in the day, right? Yeah. All day. Prairie View. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so yeah, it, it it changes. DC was different to me. I, just me being there, living there for the amount of time uh, it took for us to shoot the show, it, it just felt like a different vibe. So there are there are different vibes every time we move, and you never know, know what you're gonna get. Yeah, because you come to Detroit, you gonna need some uh, bodyguards. Yeah. Cause we- <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you need a bodyguard. You need a mink coat. Just a lot of stuff you gotta have when you in Detroit. Yeah, that's the one I want to see. Come to Detroit, get that royal blue. Everybody got them royal blue uh, on from head to toe. Yeah, you come to Detroit. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna down Detroit. Some of my favorite people are from Detroit, Lonnie. I love Detroit. <laughs> I went on one date in Detroit. We went to a pizza spot downtown. He didn't say one word to me during the date. And then afterwards, he wanted a kiss and wanted to go out again. And I was like, didn't say one word on the date. I mean, it was like pulling teeth, nephew Tommy. I'm just telling you, you know, I, I, oh I talk God. for a living. You know what I'm saying? So I got, <laughs> I got conversation game. Okay. 
he ain't saying nothing like one word answers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh. I was like, wow. Okay. Yeah. Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. I go home and I see you next weekend. <laughs> but Tommy, what's your dream? You know, then other than the cities you've already been, what are some, you know, your wishes for other cities? Where would you like to go? Uh, you know what? Miami was was one of them, but I'd like to see. I mean, I'm I'm kind of on the fence, Lonnie. With do I want LA or do I not want LA? Hello. And if I get LA, am, am I gonna get some real people? Or am I gonna get some fake people? You and already that's know. My problem. You already yeah. know. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I think <laughs> New York. New York is great. Cause yeah, I'd love to do now. New York will work. Yeah, New, New York. Yeah. You always gonna get real people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. New York yeah. and North Carolina, North Carolina. You know I'm going <laughs> down for that. You think Charlotte would be good? Charlotte yeah. would be great. Yeah, Charlotte yeah. would be great. Charlotte, and it's beautiful. You'd be able to get some beautiful shots out there in Charlotte. So, you you know what I wanted to ask you, Tommy? Who's more aggressive now in the dating scene, men or women? You know what? I don't I, I don't know if I would use the word aggressive, but I what I like about my sisters that I see, they're confident. <laughs> And it's a lot of boss. It's a lot of boss ladies out there, and they they just think they're not having it. So if your brother will come up with all this crazy game, they picking out their foolishness immediately and, and kicking it to the curb. And if they don't see the foolishness, I'm gonna pick it out and say, Nah, bro, we ain't doing it. So I'm I'm out there for 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 the brother that's trying to run the, the game. And you you know, I mean, we had a guy on, the, on one of the shows that he told every last one of them he gonna take them on a trip. What? <laughs> Uh-huh. And then you know, and when the ladies get together, he told he go. He said he's gonna take you somewhere too. He said he's gonna take me out for my birthday. We are gonna go on a trip. Oh my god! He told every lady the same thing. Wow. wow. Tommy, though, I, I just have to for the boss ladies out there. Seriously, I, I feel like men, black men, mm. don't necessarily do so well when you have a strong, powerful, confident woman even if she presents herself in a in a way that's not you know a man hater style or i don't need you style i mean are you guys intimidated by us i think some men i think some men are intimidated but you know what there are some men out there that are confident with what they're doing and you know if you get a i I look at it this way if you get a lady that's balling harder than you making more than you then guess what buddy you 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 lucked up you got a good one and opposed to looking at it like oh my god i gotta i gotta be better than her i gotta be better than her if you're looking at it that way then you you you're looking for love the wrong way right now tommy on your show do they be having sex with each other. <laughs> now, Lonnie, why you act like I'm in there with them, baby? I'm not in there with them. <laughs> the camera is. <laughs> so well, let me let me say this. Let me say this. One of the Houston uh, uh, seasons was actually on a resort due to the pandemic. So we were on a resort out in the middle of nowhere, and so I went into the control room one night. <clears throat> I didn't know the control room. They got cameras down the whole hallway of this hotel where these people are staying. Uh And I'm like, oh, okay. So, you know, I couldn't sleep. I'm on a resort. And I was like, all right, let me, let me go in the control room and see what these kids be doing. And I'm calling them kids, but let me see what they be doing this late. Man, you, when you, you want to talk about creeping (laughs) down this hallway, up and down this hallway. I was like, oh my God, they working up in here. And then I seen one girl, she got, this is her gimmick. She, she thinks she's slick. She's going up and down the hallway with an ice bucket. Like she got, like she going to get ice. <laughs> and, and, but, but making all these damn stops. I'm like, I know that ice done melted by now. You ain't, you ain't got back to your room yet with this bucket of ice. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. I'm just, I'm just giving it I'm giving it to y'all real. You want what's real? I'm giving it to you. Well, well, but let's get really real. Okay. I saw the contract years ago. I saw the contract for Flavor of Love in it. It said, "We don't advise sex, but if you do, if you catch this 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 and this, we're not liable." Um, is mm. there what does the contract look like? I mean, you know, <laughs> For the for the contestant, yeah, you know what, Angela, you done spoiled the whole thing. Here you come. We was up here having you know fun. What? Here you come. You want to get real? If you get pregnant on the set, okay, you okay, are let's not talk about that. <laughs> okay, so let's 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 talk about that. So I had I had a contestant once again, Houston, on the resort. 
and we finished this whole season. And I swear to you, the first episode is getting ready to come on. Um, so it's the premiere for that season. Mm-hmm. I go out and I'm a little, me and my wife are a little, a little, you know, paranoid about going out at that time because the pandemic was very, very strong. So we decided to go anyway. We go out in Houston. This young lady walks up to me. She got, she probably made it to about the fourth week on the show. So now, mind you, there's only been, there's only been about uh, maybe six weeks, six to eight weeks, I guess, that has surpassed. I see this girl, she comes up to me and I'm looking at her, I'm like, mm, something don't look right. She, she said, hey, Tommy. I said, hey, how you doing? I said, this is my wife, Jackie. And she said, hey, Miss Jackie. I was, and I'm still looking at her kind of strange. And she's like, yeah, yeah, I'm pregnant. I said, you are, aren't you? <laughs> I said, I said, um, so wait a minute. So when you was on the show, "Mm -hmm, I was pregnant then. I said, oh, so what the hell? I'm I'm, I'm looking for me. I'm looking for me a baby dad. I need one. I'm like, are you serious? Are you really serious? She was pregnant while she was on my show. Wow. (laughs) And then when we got to the reunion, and then when we got to the reunion special, I was paranoid because she was in the ninth month, and I just didn't want this girl to have this baby on my stage. <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> You're not finna have this baby on my set like this. We're not finna do this. This oh. is ready to love, not ready to birth. We're not doing this. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. <laughs> it's Cafe Boca. <laughs> We're talking about Ready to Love. It's on OWN Friday nights. Um, (laughs) Nephew Tommy, I do want to ask about, um, and Lonnie, this is for you too. Essence is going to be back this year. You guys excited? I mean, is it it happening? Is it going to be in person? (laughs) (laughs) That's a a Lonnie question. I passed the torch to her. I know. And then I'm passing the torch to somebody else because I ain't going. (laughs) <laughs> All right, well, there it is. I'm the only one excited. Okay. I'm, I'm still paranoid. There's a lot of people down there, but I do want to say that, um, you know, it's exciting to see that it is coming back. And I always right. tell people, you know, uh, nephew Tommy was the one that got me ready. I was the first woman to MC, And the minute he found out that I was uh, going to be the MC for the Essence Festival, he called me, he gave me notes. Um, a lot of people don't have to do that. And that just tells you his character and the type of person that he is. And, I, and that's why, you know, you see the success that he always has because he's just a down. Thank you, baby girl. Down. I appreciate so, that. Ready, I appreciate it. Ready to love on own Friday nights hosted by Thomas Miles. Thank you so much for spending time with us, Tommy. Oh, uh, thank you guys for having me. Y'all want me some more? Y'all call me. I'll, I'll definitely jump on the line with y'all. Cool. Thank <laughs> you. Right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. Put the well, hey hey. Put them ice buckets down, okay? Put the <laughs> ice buckets <laughs> down. <laughs> you love it. All right, y'all take care. You thank too. you to the host of Ready to Love, Tommy Miles. The show airs Friday nights on OWN. Loving our brothers, men with strength, wisdom, assertive, and genuine in their spirit. It's the Cafe Mocha Swag. Hosted by Rashawn McDonald. Thank you, ladies. It's Rashawn McDonald from Money Making Conversation Masterclass with Cafe Mocha Swag Award winner Robert Townsend. He is a successful actor, producer, and filmmaker. He talked about making your pitch and marketing yourself. I understood that there is an audience out there that loves the five heartbeats, so I went to Fathom Events, and I just kind of looked in a, at a lane and said, hey, I think there's a big audience for this, and I want to see and test the frequency. I think we can make some money on it. And I did the numbers and broke down my PowerPoint, how many markets how many times it, it plays on television, the Twitter followers, the Instagram followers. They heard the pitch and they said, wow, we've never done anything like this. I posted one time, I think we got close to a half a million people that were engaged. As an entrepreneur, you know, you got to find a lane, you got to look at the lane, you know, and say, there is still an audience for this film. And, and, and it all just kind of lined up. You can listen to this full interview with Robert Townsend. It's available on moneymakingconversation.com. Keep winning. We're at Cafe Mo- Hey, this is Claude Kelly from We Sound Crazy with your Black Music Month Spotlight. Victoria Monet is an American singer and songwriter. As an artist, Monet released a second installment of her Jaguar trilogy titled Jaguar 2. 
The album won Best R&B Album and Best Engineered Album Non-Classical at the 66th Grammy Awards and featured hit singles such as Smoke. And so I know I want the generation that where that music was their prime to appreciate it, but also my generation to find some of the lyrics fun and use them as captions. So I want to have that juxtaposition. Party Girls and the RAA certified platinum track on my mama. <laughs> Hey, it's Angelique here. Walt Disney World Resort is bringing you the culture with music, art, and food. Imagine savoring Princess and the Frog's decadent bread pudding and berry bananas at Disney's Port Orleans Resort. Take in Disney's Animal Kingdom Park Circle of Life Festival, celebrating the Lion King and more. Walt Disney World Resort is a place where you can come and celebrate with your family, and you can do it soulfully. Bring yourself to Walt Disney World Resort and celebrate the culture. Cafe Mocha. It's Cafe Mocha. On the line, Ron Adams. He is Vice President of Diversity and Inclusion at Northwestern Mutual. Welcome to Cafe Mocha. Thank you for having me. Pleasure to be here with you. You know, we we broadcast out of L.A., Laker country. So before we even get into um, (laughs) your documentary, The Loyola Project, that's about basketball, I want to ask you if you've seen winning time on hbo max have you checked it out yet the story about the legacy of the lakers and magic coming and how uh jerry bus bought the lakers yes i I have watched it i had to stay up late um and sneak and watch it one night so i did get a chance to see it um you know it's interesting what uh what struck me about the series so far is that we think of basketball as this huge industry now but back then back in the 70s 80s it was like a black thing and Jerry Buss people frowned their nose up at him because he wanted to invest in this basketball team was like why basketball nobody watches basketball what struck you about the series I think that struck me as well and when I think about the investment that he made how that investment paid off that's what I was thinking to the same point you were just making, what he paid for it and how he pulled those resources together um, to get the team and, and people didn't have much value in it. And, and, and you look at, look at it today, with mm-hmm. how that investment paid off, th- that's what stood out to me. Yeah, guys, he was selling properties. He was doing all <laughs> kinds. Of, he had like four or five buildings he was trying to sell so he could pay for the Lakers. And he still didn't have enough money, but he had vision. You know, what What channel was this on? What channel was this? It's on HBO Max. I think it comes on Sunday nights. I'm going to have to check it out. It's called The Winning Time. Okay. And it's about the Lakers and uh, and the early days of the Lakers when Magic joined. Mm. The best time then. That was the best. Well, one of the best times for the Lakers. But Ron, I mean, you're an investment. You're a money man. And one of the things that Northwestern Mutual invested in is supporting a movie that is about basketball. It's called the Loyola Project. Tell us about this basketball team. Yes, this is exciting for us to to be a part of this. Um, The Loyola Project is actually a documentary uh, about race tension. It's about courage. It's about college basketball. And it just happens to be centered on the 1963 Loyola University Chicago men's NCAA championship team. Um, one of the games that they played that you, you see in the film was on their way to the championship is that they had to play Mississippi State University. Now, the governor of Mississippi wasn't having it. So he literally forbid Mississippi State, since it's a state school, from playing in the tournament. The, the players wanted to play. The coaches from Mississippi wanted to play. They literally had to sneak out of the state to get to Michigan to play this game. And there's this famous photo where you see the two captains coming to the middle of the floor to shake hands, and the lights just go – I mean, the photo flashes from the cameras go off. And, and one of the players said that he remembered that moment and saying, man, this is more than a game. Uh, we're making history. And the problem was um, that Loyola 
it was an unwritten rule back then in 1963 that you only play one black player at home, one, two black players if you were on the road. You could play three if you were what they would call in a pickle. And um, the Loyola coach, he was losing and he needed to win. So he wanted to put the, you know, best team on the floor. He ended up playing four black starters at a time. And so that it was this big deal in 1963 as they were winning. And so this documentary tells that story. And what I love about it is they don't just, the documentary is not just keeping us in the past. They actually have um, a young man named Lucas Williamson, who is the current captain of the Loyola men's team right now. Mm-hmm. He's the of the film. He's the co-writer of the film. So you're getting to see this young man tell this story and engage with those 63, 1963 players in a way that is just very special to see how relevant um, the, their story is now. And so it, it's really beyond basketball. It's a great, great story. Okay. And uh, and how far we've come. You can't have four basketball players on the court at the same I time. Know, right? <laughs> How far right. we've come. Um, and so the Loyola Project, it's going to be on Paramount Plus yes. April 2nd and, and on CBS. And CBS, yes. It's, it, they aired it once on CBS Sports already. Um, it's going to actually air on CBS, the parent channel, during the Final Four um, weekend. Okay, cool. And then you can also check it out on Paramount Plus. Uh, when we come back, I want to talk to you about you're a DEI guy, diversity and inclusion. Um, and so I want to talk about some of the efforts by corporations to yeah. get their numbers up since uh, the death of George Floyd. It's Cafe Mocha. Cafe Mocha listener Ellie has a message for Will and Chris. Chris Rock, well, two wrongs don't make a right. But but what was wrong with it was the fact that that moment overshadowed the rest of the night. These, this year's offers was like, so many groundbreaking historical things happened that just got overlooked and overshadowed by that slap. We missed out on everyone overlooked the fact that Love won off of this awesome documentary. Women are recognized. Um, the actors are recognized. And the whole entire production team that put on the off this year was, um, was, was African American or, or, or a team of, of men and women of color. It was so ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. Something like this took away from all of this momentum milestone that we made. Here's your dose of espresso. Strong, hot news now. This is The Espresso. Here's what Lonnie Love had to say about the smack on her talk show, The Real. Will was sitting front and center for a reason. And for you, all the people that you could joke about, you look at this one woman who you've already done. And for a minute, Will was going to let it slide. Yeah. Yeah. Now, would I walked up and hit him? No, I probably would have stood up. I'm so mad right now. Last week, the Black News Channel ran out of money and stopped production immediately. Here's Roland Martin reading the letter that BNC wrote their staff. Every day we present our stories, context, and viewpoints that illuminate and celebrate the Black experience in a way that no other network has since the dawn of television. We have hired more than 250 Black journalists and Black production personnel, and all your hard work and dedication has lifted this network to incredible heights. And those incredible heights ended last week. Roland Martin does not work for BNC, but now he's the only other TV outlet doing black news. That's the espresso. We're at Cafe Mocha Radio. Socially savvy on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Serving up more Cafe Mocha on the way. Hi, it's me, Gia pa- It's Cafe Mocha on the line. He is the Vice President of Diversity and Inclusion at Northwestern Mutual. Ron Adams is on the line. And Ron, I got to be honest with you. uh, No hate on the the DEI crew, but I got drafted to be on a DEI team, which I did not get paid extra money for, that (laughs) milked a lot of my mental resources while trying to do, you know, my regular job. Then I got to go and be responsible for all these other people at the station who don't know how to act. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) I wanted to address this because I know I'm not the only black woman uh, of a certain age who got drafted into DEI without payment and without much glory. (laughs) That was not uncommon. Um, in corporate many years ago, and maybe in some cases, um, some people will probably feel that now, but I'll tell you, as a practitioner, you know, DEI, as an executive leader who's doing DEI now um, uh, as, a, as a role, 
I understand how important it is. And I think if you talk to most people who are in, investing their time and energy in this work and their companies now, there is paying off in some way, shape, form, or fashion, whether it's visibility, whether it's opportunity for projects, or even bonuses and extra pay. Are they really interested in doing it or is it still just a front? I mean, because it seems like the people who have the say so, you, you know, they have these teams, they have these great ideas, the funding that it, you have to go through so many loopholes to get the funding. I mean, is it really worth it or is it just another act to just to look good, just to make yeah. people think that companies are doing something? Right. You, you know what? I'm sure you can probably get some people on here who will say, hey, they fronting at, at this company. And, and I'm sure that's probably true in some places. I'm happy to say at Northwestern Mutual that it's not, you okay. know, and, and I'm in the room. And, and so I know that it's not. And so we're all in. We're, we're, in, we're investing now even more. We took a long term approach DEI at Northwestern Mutual. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I want to point to two things. Number one, make sure you check out the documentary, The Loyola Project, that's going to be on CBS during the final four. And then you can catch it on Paramount Plus. And then also um, just Google Northwestern Mutual Black Founders Accelerator. And uh, it'll come right up if you want to check out that $100,000 investment that they're making. I said you can Google the LoyolaProject.com too to get more information on the screenings around the country. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. This is Cafe Mocha. You can follow us on all platforms at Cafe Mocha Radio. I'm Angelique. Uh, Lonnie Love and Yo-Yo's with us. Okay, so ladies, I have a question because this was something that was really popular. Um, it, it was going around online. And basically it says, if you had to pick two people to help you roast someone, who would it be? And your choices are some more, <laughs> Monique, Ooh. Wanda, Leslie Jones, Lunell, Adele Givens, Cheryl Underwood, Tiffany Haddish. Who would you pick? Mm. Two. You could get two. Okay. I would. I would definitely pick Monique, mm -hmm. and I would pick Lonnie Love. Oh, I'm not in it. <laughs> <laughs> and you're too nice anyway, Lonnie. Put honestly. myself in. Yeah, I am too nice. Yeah. Who else? Monique, and who else would you pick? Um, I like some more has always been really raw and I don't feel like we see enough of her. So I definitely go with the first two, some more and Monique. Okay. All right. So I, I probably use Wanda Sykes. Mm. I, I can get Adele. Adele's pretty good too. Okay. Still Rose. Yeah. Yeah. I would probably go with, let me tell y'all, Cheryl Underwood is a beast. When it oh, comes yeah, to yeah. roasting. Cheryl would, would get it and get down, you know, and then I would probably go with Adele, too, because, you know, Adele is just really witty and funny and she would find something to, to roast. That's that's that old school, you know, roast. And, it, it, and it's so true that it don't even hurt your feelings. Like, you like you can't even be mad. You can't even be mad. So that's that's the type of roaster that Adele is. Okay, now let's switch it over to the comedian guys. If you had to pick two comedian guys to help you roast somebody, would it be Mike Epps, D.L. Hughley, Cat Williams, Martin Lawrence, Dave Chappelle, Bernie Mac, Kevin Hart, Ricky Smiley, or Eddie Murphy? Oh, I'm going with Cat Williams and Eddie Murphy. <laughs> Cat Williams and Eddie? <laughs> I'm going with Kat and Eddie because Eddie's just stupid. <laughs> Eddie's stupid and, and Kat will take it personal. So it, it might turn into a fight battle. <laughs> you know, I, I, I hate to 100% agree, but I'm going with Yo-Yo on this one. Kat <laughs> Williams and Eddie Murphy. Cat is crazy. And Eddie is just so good. And you know, he's going to think about it. You know what I'm saying? You know, he's going to come up with some funny, clever, you know, hopefully he'll wear the leather pants or whatever. We're vegan leather pants and, you know, shake his little chocolate booty around the stage while he's doing it. Uh, yeah. Oh. No, I would I would have to say 
uh, DL Hughley mm-hmm. can roast like nobody's business. He really, really can. And then I would have to say Bernie Mac. Oh yeah, Bernie Mac. See, Bernie Mac to me is really the one of the kings of that. And I know that he would be just incredible just mm-hmm. on the spot because he's so quick, he's so funny, and he's so <laughs> yeah, I do love Bernie Mac. I do yeah. love Yeah. I mean, this is like, I mean, people really got into into this. Um, you know, when I when I posted about it, and they were just like, so when I saw that they did one for the fellas, I said, well, let me do one for the girls, you know. And people was like, you missing some people. And people really <laughs> took it personal. And I'm like, I'm just trying to throw up, you know, a couple of pictures, you know, and it gives it pays homage to these wonderful comedians. Support what we do by clicking the like button on our post, following us on social media, downloading our podcast, and sharing us with your friends. We've been on for like a decade. You know, a lot of people still haven't heard of Cafe Mocha, don't know what it is. We need to change that. That's the show. Until next time, find us on all platforms at Cafe Mocha Radio. Cafe Mocha is a production of Miles Ahead Broadcasting in partnership with Compass Media. Executive producer Sheila Eldridge. For comments, booking, or more information, visit CafeMochaRadio.com. Hi, this is Chuck Harmony from We Sound Crazy with your Black Music Month Spotlight. Missy Elliott is a pioneering American songwriter, rapper, singer, and producer. She emerged in the 1990s as part of the R&B girl group Sister and gained widespread recognition for her innovative approach to performance and music production. Me, I'm super fly, super duper fly, super I duper fly. Me, I'm super fly, super duper fly. In 2020, Billboard ranked her at number five on their list of the 100 greatest music video artists of all time. And in 2023, Elliot became the first female rapper inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Being the first to be inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame means so much to me because I never thought that in a million years, like that's the, probably the top tier of making it as an artist. Hey, it's Angelique here. Walt Disney World Resort is bringing you the culture with music, art, and food. Imagine savoring Princess and the Frog's decadent bread pudding and berry bananas at Disney's Port Orleans Resort. Take in Disney's Animal Kingdom Park Circle of Life Festival, celebrating the Lion King and more. Walt Disney World Resort is a place where you can come and celebrate with your family and you can do it soulfully. Bring yourself to Walt Disney World Resort and celebrate the culture.